Assalamu alaikum. My name is Dr. Saqib Iqbal and I will be teaching you professional practices in IIT. The course code is CSC110 and this is lecture 1. Okay, first of all, I will give you my introduction. My name is Dr. Saqib Iqbal and uh, my education, uh, for, I did MSc in Computer Science in 2003 from Punjab University Lahore and my specialization area in my MSc was software engineering and I continued in the software engineering field and did an MSc in software engineering in 2007 from Queen Mary University of London UK and then I pursued a doctorate degree in software engineering and I finished my PhD in 2012 from University of Huddersfield, UK. As far as my experience is concerned, I started my professional career as a lecturer in ComSat Institute of Information Technology at a campus in April 2004 and I stayed there for one year and I taught software engineering courses and during that year and then I got a job as a software engineer in Askri Commercial Bank where I have responsibility of reverse engineering uh, a legacy software which was being used in the bank and uh, I did some other IT related jobs as well during that period and I did that job for one year from 2005 to 2006 and then I came back to ComSat Institute of Information Technology at a campus in 2006 and uh, I rejoined them as a lecturer and I stayed there for another two years before uh, going to UK for a PhD degree. And after finishing my PhD in 2012, I came back and rejoined ComSat as assistant professor and currently I am working in that campus. Okay. Um, if you look at the course which I will be teaching you, the course code is CSC110. Its name is Professional Practices in ID. And the objective of this course are to, uh, the primary objective of the course is to make students aware of their professional uh, responsibilities when they work in an IT sector. The course will teach students about the historical, social, ethical, economical and professional issues uh, related to that IT profession. So when you are in an IT field, you have some kind of responsibilities uh, which uh, you owe to the society and to your profession and you have to follow those uh, responsibilities and you have to perform them to contribute to your profession as well as to the society. So this course will be all about learning about those responsibility and uh, studying about them and uh, to learn how to follow them, how to act upon them and how to implement them in your professional field. Uh, marks distribution of this course are as follows. Uh, there will be some assignments and the weightage of those assignments will be 15% of your module and uh, then quizzes uh, there will be some quizzes but the overall weightage of those quizzes will be 10% of the module and then we will have two sessionals. First sessional will carry 10 marks and the second sessional will, uh, will have 15 marks. So in aggregation we will have 25% marks for sessionals and then we will have a final which will have 50% of the module. Okay, now we look at the course outline and we will start with the introduction of information technology. Now you first have to know what information technology is and uh, what is the, what are the different information technology mediums which are being used, how information technology is helping society and how information technology is uh, being used by professionals as well as students and um, and uh, common people in the society. Then we will go on to professionalism because we will be studying professional practices in IT. So first we need to know 
what a professionalism is. And now in general, uh, we will talk about general professionalism, which could be applicable in any walk of life. And, but we will be specifically focusing on the professionalism related to IT profession. Then we will cover some um, topics in professional activities and their role in society. So you need to know what are the different activities which you take up when you are in, a, in an IT profession and uh, what is the role you have as an IT professional towards the society. And then we will talk about uh, some professional ethics. We will have some lectures on professional ethics where I will teach you the, what are your ethical responsibility and what are different aspects of uh, professional ethics which you have to follow as an IT professional. And then misuse of IT. And with the increase of IT in the society, there are some misuses of IT as well which are being adopted for, uh, for bad purposes. And there are some risks which are involved with the misusage of IT. So we will have a look at all the risks and the different types of misuses of IT. And then we will have some lectures on hacking and ethical hacking. Now hacking is when, when, somebody, uh, when somebody intrudes into a system for malicious purposes. Now with the information being spread throughout the world through internet and other network based systems, now hacking has become a big issue. Now the information which is being kept throughout the world may on internet media or in the banking media, there is some critical information, there is some sensitive information and intruders can take uh, data out for malicious purposes and they can intrude into the system. So hacking has become a big issue in, uh, in IT profession. But there is some ethical hacking as well which could be done to protect data or which could be done to understand uh, the way intruders intrude into the system and uh, where intruders break the security. So professionals, ethical prof hackers, they go into the system and they try to look at the weak areas and the loopholes in the system. They try to identify them and they try to cover them so that intruders do not have a chance to go into the system without permission. Information security and privacy, we will have some lecture on information security as well. So we, this is also related to the hacking and ethical hacking. And then issues in social web. Now with the, in, with the increase in the usage of internet, social media is becoming popular as well throughout the world. Now in the social media, you must have heard about Facebook, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube. So these are examples of the social media. And there are, uh, with, the, with its increased usage, uh, the privacy of the data which is on the social uh, medium uh, is becoming important. Similarly, the, there is some trust issues and there is some influence issues as well because uh, social media could be used to influence people. So we will look at some issues which are related to these, uh, these some key points uh, when you are using social web. And then comes plagiarism. So in the plagiarism, plagiarism is an act of using somebody else's intellectual material without their permission. Now plagiarism is also a big problem and it's not only a problem in, um, in IT profession but also for you students as well, in the universities as well. So we will look at uh, plagiarism, what a plagiarism is, what are the different types of plagiarism, so, so that you should know that uh, how, how bad plagiarism is and what are different types of plagiarism which you don't consider as plagiarism, but they are also come under this umbrella. So we will look at those types and we will try to learn about them and we will try, to, we will also try to learn how to avoid plagiarism. Now they, I mean you can always use uh, other people's intellectual work 
but you need to have some kind of permission and there are some le uh, some legitimate ways to use those uh, intellectual material so we will learn everything about plagiarism we will have a few lectures on plagiarism then we will move on to intellectual property and software laws this is also related to plagiarism now what is intellectual property and what are different types of intellectual property which are available on media or in your uh, profession uh, in your profession and then we will look at some software laws now now with the increase in with the increase in the usage of computer and software some software laws have also been defined which you should follow to protect other people's property and then comes social responsibilities of an IT profession and uh, there are as I mentioned before as an, as an IT professional you have some responsibilities towards the society so we will look at those responsibilities so this way we will complete our course and other than because these are the only main areas which we will cover but of course there will be some other sub areas as well there will be some subsections as well which we will, we will also follow during our course now we start our lecture one so in this lecture I will tell you about IT information technology what information technology is and how it is being used in the society and in IT prof in, in profession uh, in the IT sector so first of all I give you introduction of information technology if you look at its definition it is a technology that helps to produce to manipulate to store to communicate and to disseminate information now what is an information information is a process data so you always need a medium to process data now to uh, to make a data into an information you need computer technology now computers you you have uh, um, the users who are using computer they input some data and that data is processed using software and uh, some other utilities to make it a useful information now but we need a medium to transfer that information from sender to receiver so that medium is a communication technology so we will look at some of the communication technology mediums which are available which are commonly being used in IT profession okay first of all we look at how it is being used in education now it is related to you as well so we will look that uh, where and how it is being used in education sector there are 99 percent of universities in Pakistan which currently have internet access now that internet access could be in the form of uh, uh, computers in the labs or computer in the offices but uh, every university at least has got some kind of internet access in their uh, in their campuses and majority of the university students own their own computer now there are labs computer labs in every university in Pakistan but other than those labs every student almost almost every student has got their own computer or at least they have got access to a computer so it means that you have got some kind of access to a computer as um, if I give your example uh, the people who are listening to this lecture you must be using um, um, a television or a computer to listen to this lecture it means that you have got some kind of access to computer 80% of students use the internet for more four or more hours per week now this is an average figure but uh, if you look around you you can see that student use even more than four hours a day uh, and uh, but if you take average then at least 80% of students are using their computers for four for more than four hours per week now half of professors in the universities require their students to use email and also they 
ask you to prepare assignments using computers and they also uh, demand those assignments in a printout format so you have to use printer as well so you always uh, you have some kind of interaction with the computer during your studies now distance learning such as this is a prime example of usage of IT now we are using computer and we are using uh, multimedia to record the lectures and those lectures are being delivered to you using some kind of television or some kind of computer so if somebody asks you to give one example of usage of IT you can say that you were a virtual university student and uh, you listen to all the lectures using IT technology because this is a prime example of IT technology. Now, after education, now health is another important area where computer is being used extensively. Now, you must have seen usage of computer in hospitals, in private clinics. Uh, the doctors use them frequently to keep your record, to perform ECG, to perform ultrasound. So there are so many usage of computers which are being used by doctors at the moment. And in every hospital, there is some kind of record being maintained of patients, of doctors, and uh, the history of the patients. So computer and uh, its related technologies uh, are becoming common in hospitals. Now there is this uh, telemedicine term which is uh, very popular in uh, health sector. What a telemedicine is that you have got computers uh, on both ends. Um, on one end you have doctors who are sitting in hospitals and the, on the other hand you have patients who are located in villages and uh, in the areas which are far from hospitals. So those two computers are connected together via GPS or via internet or some other kind of network technology. So in this telemedicine, uh, what a patient does is that they send their symptoms through that medium, through GPS or through internet, and doctors receive those symptoms in hospitals, and then they diagnose the disease of the patient and then they prescribe medicine and send that prescription to the patient. So the patient, patients don't have to travel to hospitals and, uh, they, and the patients who are located at far-flung areas, they can take advantage of this facility sitting at their home. So this telemedicine is becoming very popular and this is an example of IT as well. Then you have 3D computer models that allow accur accurately locate tumors inside a skull. Now, you have got other technologies which also use computer, by the way, such as MRI or CT scans. But uh, skull is, uh, is such a complicated organ of the body that uh, it's never easy to locate a tumor in the skull. Now, with the help of IT technologies, doctors have started using 3D computer models to look at in the, into the skull and to find a tumor which could be hidden in the brain. So it is uh, easy to use this technology because 3D technology helps you viewing the skull from every angle and uh, so you don't have to penetrate into the skull and you don't have to have uh, x-rays uh, of the skull so you can easily look at the skull by building its models and then by looking at those models you can locate where a tumor is and then uh, with the with the invention of robots you have uh, usage of IT with the help of report robots in the surgery field as well now if you look at the surgery of a brain tumor it is very critical surgery because uh, 
the skull contains brain and uh, while doing a surgery by a, by a human being there is always a chance that brain could could be hurt but if you use robots and IT technology then you don't have that element of human error so you can precisely perform a microsurgery with the help of IT technology and robots another usage is handheld computers that allow patients to measure blood sugar now blood sugar you must have seen those devices which are being used nowadays commonly to calculate blood sugar and these handheld devices are very cheap and they are very common you can they are easily available in the market and uh, these handheld computers they have got microchips installed in them so what you do is that you have got a pin in that handheld computer handheld device and you take shoe and you take blood out of a patient using that pin and then the computer inside that held held a handheld um, device calculates uh, the blood sugar using that sample so you don't have to go to a lab to to have this kind of test you can easily use a handheld device to perform a blood sugar check now medical implants are also being commonly used they allow stroke patients to directly control computers to talk for them now there is a prime example of this if you have ever heard of Stephen Hawking he is a very famous physicist and a scientist who is based in the UK is working uh, in Cambridge University now he's been using he he has been using this kind of device since uh, 80s now so it's it has been 30 years uh, that the, that kind of device is being used by people who can talk for them now Stephen Hawking is totally paralyzed and he's always sitting in a chair now he cannot talk and he cannot move so what a computer does for him is that with the help of his movements and there are some sensors in the computer which detect those movements and they they figure out that what Stephen Hawking wanted to say so the computer generates that voice for him and he talks with the people for him on his behalf then we have uh, health websites that provide medical information if you go online you can find many websites which provide you information about the diseases and uh, about the symptoms you have now those uh, websites there are professional doctors who are sitting on their websites and they check the symptom of the people and then they diagnose or they, they prescribe medicines to them now these are forums and some of them are government aided websites as well which provide general health related information to the patients around the country and uh, wherever you are sitting either in the country or anywhere in the world you can put on information about your disease on internet and a professional doctor will have a look at it and will pres prescribe or diagnose your disease or will prescribe some medicine to you so with the help of internet and with the help of information technology uh, patients are uh, being benefited around the world and um, this is a, a big example of usage of IT in health department okay if we look at money nowadays even cashless money is becoming very popular in the society now what is a cashless money it is a virtual money which you can use on internet you don't have to have physical notes uh, you just have to have a bank account and that bank account could easily be connected to a website where there are servers who keep record of uh, your money and then they 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 have a virtual account for you so you transfer your money from a bank account to to that virtual account and then you can use to 
or use that virtual money to buy anything on internet what is a virtual what does virtual mean virtual is something that is created simulated or carried on carried on by means of a computer or a computer network so it is not a tangible money it's not a physical money it's a virtual money and uh, there is a less chance of of course stealing there is a less chance of fraud if you have a virtual money and this virtual money is being commonly used to pay for your merchandise using paypal now first of all we will describe how you pay online bills you mu you must have seen that all the banks are offering this kind of facility that if you want to pay your electricity bill or your gas bill or your water bill what you can do is that you can have an online account and uh, just uh, sitting at home you can pay all these bills using your online account so there is no physical transaction of money rather there is a virtual transaction of the money but money of course is being deducted from your physical bank account similarly you have got a facility which is called paypal now paypal is a website which allows you to maintain such kind of virtual account online now paypal is an organization what it does is that it connects your banking account with uh, with paypal server and you have got uh, your account on it and using that account you can either send money to somebody in the world or you can receive money from some from somebody using internet media and that money could uh, could be transferred to bank any time so in other words it is basically a virtual bank for you and you can open an account and you can use your account as if you use in a physical bank then we have electronic payroll deposit now you if you are working somewhere or if anybody um, related to you is working somewhere you must have heard that they are getting their money through their banks now the bank and the money from employers are being transferred to a bank and uh, those banks are available online so now in, now employees can have their salaries through internet i mean they can they don't have uh, they don't have to have uh, physical money in their pocket what what happens is that their salary comes straight to their uh, online account micro payments for online music now you can purchase online music you can listen to online music using micro payments micro payment is again a kind of virtual money which could be performed using paypal account or using your credit card or debit card so music websites if you go online there are loads of music website if you go there and if you want to purchase music or if you want to download a music or listen to a music they always give you a facility that you can pay for that using online accounts or using uh, online credit cards okay we missed virtual airline tickets before so i will tell you what an virtual airline ticket is if you have traveled recently you must have seen that all airlines offer online tickets that is called e ticketing so e ticketing is a facility where you don't have to have a physical ticket what you do is that you go online on the website of that airline and you do your booking and then an e ticket is generated for you that e ticket contains all all kind of information which a physical ticket contains so it has got your flight number it has got your flight date and time and everything so what you do is it it also contains the payment which you have made for that ticket so what you do is you take print out of that e ticket and you go straight to airport and you take your flight and before the introduction of e ticketing what you had to do is that you had to go to a reservation office or booking office or uh, to the office of that airline and then you have to do your booking physically and they would uh, they used to give you the physical ticket and uh, then you have to go to the airport to sh uh, 
along with your physical ticket but nowadays even if you don't take print out of your ticket if you go to airport there are some airports in the world which don't demand a physical ticket what they do is that you can simply show them e-ticket on your mobile or on your laptop and they will accept your ticket and they will let you get on the airplane so we have looked at these examples where information technology is being used for money exchange as well and for making online transactions now we will look at where and how information technology is being used for leisure and for entertainment now everybody among you must have played video games sometime in your life now video games in the beginning video games used to come in handheld devices but nowadays you can find all types of video games on internet now this is a way of having a leisure time or way of uh, doing your hobby playing games using information technology you must have downloaded movies music and ebooks on internet as well now this is another usage of information technology you can simply go on to the movies website and then whatever movie you like you can pay for that movie using your PayPal account or using your virtual money uh, which is in form of a debit card or a credit card and then you can simply download either download the movie or you can watch that movie online similarly as I told you before you can listen to music or you can download music online so you don't have to go to a physical music store or a movie store and then there are some ebooks available as well for example I am teaching you about information technology if you want to know more about information technology there are loads of ebooks available on internet you can uh, and most of them are freely available you don't have to pay for them but even if you have to pay there is a very minimal charges so you can you don't have to purchase a physical book rather you can go online and you can download one of these ebooks and you can simply read them online so in this way you you can save book space as well and you can save um, money as well because majority of these ebooks are freely available on internet and then uh, most movies use computer animation now information technology is also being extensively used in movie making as well now you must have seen some animated movies I will give you some example if you have seen Ice Age or um, Up or uh, Hotel Pennsylvania there are loads of animated movies which are being released by Hollywood and uh, other um, uh, film industries around the world now all these movies they use computers and information technology mediums to create these movies now these animated movies they don't have any physical actor in them all the characters are made on computers and using uh, specially custom, specially customized uh, software and um, so this is an example where information technology is being uh, extensively used then digital editing digital editing of this movie is performed on computers and um, this is uh, another example of how it, IT is being used in the movie sector jobs and careers now computer is everywhere and computer related technologies are everywhere uh, whenever you step into any office whether it's a bank whether it is an account office whether um, it is a university or whether uh, it is a hospital you see computers everywhere and they are being used for different purposes for example in an office computers are used for budgeting for payrolling for letter writing for emailing so uh, software uh, and computers are extensively being used 
to perform day-to-day -day office activities. Similarly, if you are in teaching profession, then computer lets you automatically grade papers and uh, then there are online uh, student portals which allow you to keep uh, lectures and uh, to keep assignments and they, these portals also allow you to mark papers online and uh, also teachers uh, communicate with students and with their parents using emails and of course distance teaching this teaching which we are doing at the moment this is also an example of usage of IT so IT is being used in teaching sector extensively nowadays if you look at fashion sector in that sector as well uh, IT is being used for sales and inventory control system for ordering and uh, for also keeping record of the personal now you must have seen many websites on internet where you can purchase shoes dresses and other kind of fashion accessories now these websites allow you to go through all their products which are available it is never easy to to go to a shop and to look at everything which is available in, the, in that shop but if you're sitting on your computer and if you're using internet you can easily browse through all the products which are offered by a specific company and then you can uh, uh, you can find a product of your choice and you can pay through your online account whether it is a PayPal account or a credit card account and you can purchase that and that company will ship your item and you will get it within a couple of days so it has become very easy it saves you time you don't have to go to a physical shop to do your shopping rather simply by using computer and internet technology you can do all kind of shopping sitting at home Similarly, for job hunting as well, job hunting used to be a very difficult task in the past. What you had to do is that you have to look at newspapers and you have to look at the announcement which are made by organization for, for job vacancies. And then you, have to you, had to have, you had to physically travel to those organization and you had to give physical interviews in every organization so it used to be a painstaking uh, task uh, and but nowadays job hunting has become very easy you can simply go on the website of the organization and there is always a link uh, which uh, tells you about the job opportunities which are available in that organization similarly there are such websites as well which uh, provides you uh, information about job opportunities of many organization so they have got their search engine so if you go to such a website you simply use a search engine where you put in the information about a job which you are looking for for example if you are uh, looking for an IT job you simply put IT in it and it will show you uh, the list of all the companies who are looking for IT professionals so this way you don't have to purchase newspapers to look for these ads and you have you don't have to go through every page of a newspaper to look for a job opportunity rather just by simply going to a one website and by using its search engine you can have a look at all the opportunities which are available in IT sector and uh, again job hunting um, it has also become easy with the help of IT uh, when you talk about preparing your application because in the past what you had to do is that you had to write an application on a physical paper and then you had to write many types of application for example if I am an IT profession a professional I can either go to an IT industry or I can go to a teaching sector so I had to had two kind of application one for IT industry and one for teaching profession and then I would post those applications 
to different organization. I had to make different copies of those applications, multiple copies of those applications, and I had to send those organization. But nowadays, with the help of IT and with the help of computer, it has become very easy to prepare your application online. There are many softwares such as word processor or uh, PowerPoint that you can use your resume. There are templates available on some websites as well. You can download, uh, you can simply download those templates and you can put in your information and you can make your CV or resume. And then you don't have to physically post them use, uh, by going to a post office. Or rather, you can simply email them to the employers who are looking for IT professionals. So your uh, CV will go electronically there and they will inform you electronically whether they are interested in hiring you or not. And uh, nowadays, even interviews are being conducted online. So there are many software. One prime example is Skype. You can use Skype. And uh, with the help of Skype, you can have a video conferencing with the employer. So employer, uh, if employer is sitting in the States or anywhere in the world, he or she can conduct an interview using Skype and you will be sitting in Pakistan and you will be using Skype on your computer and you will have a video conferencing through which your whole interview will be conducted. So it means that you don't have to travel to any other country or any other part of the country. Uh, you can simply give an interview sitting in your bedroom. And uh, so job hunting has become very easy with the help of IT and IT is also being used in many careers or in many professions throughout the world. Now here I have a question that after telling you about different usage of IT, can anyone think of a career that does not require computer skill? And I bet you cannot find a single career which does not have any kind of computer involvement. So wherever, whatever sector you want to go, wherever you want to do a job, you should be a computer literate and you should have some kind of knowledge of using computer. Okay, now we go on to the communication technologies. So in the communication technology, first of all comes telephone. Now, the cell phones, which are very popular at the moment, everybody, almost everybody has got at least one cell phone. Now, these cell phones were first introduced in 1973, when first phone call was made using a cell phone. And then these cell phones started being used throughout the world. And by 2006, only one company, that is Nokia, had sold more than 2 billion cell phones throughout the world. Now you can see that how quickly cell phones became popular. And today, cell phones have so many features. They are not only mobile, and they're not only portable devices, but they can also provide you with, uh, with mediums through which you can send pictures, you can send text, you can send audio, and also you can connect to the internet, you can use social media. So there are multiple uses of cell phones at the moment. And uh, the cell phone has become a prime communication technology which is being used to transfer information from one place to another. Another communication technology media is, of course, internet. And in internet, there is this term, you must have heard about it, www, which is World Wide Web. Now, what is World Wide Web? Basically, it is a kind of a software. It is a kind of uh, a medium which connects with internet and which allows you to send some information from one part of the world to another using internet. Now, internet 
uh, if uh, okay before going on to the world wide web I will define what an internet is if you look at this word internet it is a, a short term of interconnected networks so in the beginning when network were networks were first introduced we used to have bus topology I don't know if you know about bus topology so I will briefly describe what a bus topology is in the bus topology all computers which are connected in a network are connected through a bus through one uh, physical cable now if you disconnect one computer out of that cable all the computers are disconnected from each other so this was the only uh, network uh, topology which was being used early in 1960s and in 50s but then then people started thinking that this topology in this technology is not uh, is not efficient and they needed to have a technology where if one computer in the network uh, becomes out of order or is disconnected other computers should not be affected so then they invented uh, internet which is such kind of technology where all the devices or all the computers are connected using wireless technology so even when one computer is disconnected all other computers remain unaffected and they remain connected so this uh, internet was first introduced in um, in ARPANET and that is a Xerox Palo Alto Research Center that is based in Silicon Valley in San Francisco and primarily it was used for defense purposes and uh, for research purposes as well and then it was given to universities in 1988 and afterwards it um, became a household thing throughout the world now internet uh, how internet became popular the basic thing behind the popularity of internet was world wide web now using world wide web you can easily send your information using internet in any part of the world so it is an interconnected system of server that support specially formatted documents in multimedia form which can include text still images moving images sound and it is also as I told you before World Wide Web is primarily responsible for the growth and popularity of the internet okay what is cyberspace now this term is also a buzz term which is very famous nowadays cyberspace was first used by William Gibson in his novel Neuro Mancer, which was published in 1984 and then this term became popular and uh, when internet became popular this was uh, when William Gibson used this term he actually meant it for uh, for those people who have got some kind of computer plugged into in, in their brains so he used cyberspace for those kind of people and for those kind of computer networks but nowadays it this term is being used for web for chat rooms for online diaries and for the wired and wireless communication world okay now we will look at some of the types of computers which are currently available in the world there are five types of computers the first type is supercomputer it was uh, first built in four, late 40s and early 50s and uh, it was not as fast as it is nowadays but uh, supercomputer was invented for solving complex problems which are not easy for small computers to perform it price it prices from 1 million to 3 350 million dollars it is a high capacity machine with thousand of processors in it it means that uh, if when you use a simple computer 
or the computer which you have at your home or in your university, that computer has either got one processor or maximum four processors. But uh, supercomputer has thousands of processors which work simultaneously and which work together to perform, uh, to solve a problem. And it is also a multi-user system, so there is not only one user sitting on supercomputer, but it can allow multiple hundred of users uh, simultaneously work on the computer. If you want to learn more about it, then there is this website. You can go and you can learn about the specification of a supercomputer. And you can also see some images of a supercomputer as well. OK, then we come to the mainframe computers. They were introduced in late 60s. And they were introduced in late 50s and 60s. And then after 60s, they are not very common in the world. At that time, this was the only computer available, and its cost starts from $5,000 to $5 million. It is also a multi-user computer, and it is accessed using a terminal. So what is a terminal? A terminal is simply a mouse or keyboard, and multi-user means that uh, there used to be several terminals of single computer. I can give you an example of uh, mainframe computer in airline companies that uh, even in the past airline companies used to have mainframe computers who used to keep record of all the passengers and their traveling and then their terminals used to be in multiple places for example if you have got one uh, main mainframe computer in one location for example if PIA had a mainframe computer, I give you example of PIA. If it had, I don't know if they have a mainframe or not, but if they had a mainframe computer for their booking, they would place it a, in one location, for example in Karachi. And then you can have its multiple terminals in other cities of Pakistan. For example, you can have one terminal in Lahore, one in Multan, one in Rawalpindi, one in Peshawar. And then using the terminal, all the, uh, all the, uh, through these terminals, you can do booking by sitting in the different cities. So it means that there are multiple users who are sitting on different locations, and there are multiple terminals they are using. But computer is only one, which is located on only in one location. Now terminals only have a keyboard and monitor, can't be used alone. And if you want to know more about mainframe computers, there is a link. You can go online and check this link. You can look at different specifications of mainframe computers. Then in, uh, in early 80s, workstations were introduced. They were quite expensive and powerful personal computers. They were smaller than mainframe computers. And, uh, but they were powerful enough to perform complex uh, solutions of problems. And they were primarily used in science, in mathematics, in engineering, and uh, in computer-aided designs and computer-aided manufacturing. This is basically a less expensive alternative to mainframe. And it is not as expensive as a mainframe is, but it is very powerful, so you can use it to, to solve complex problems. And if you want to know more about workstation, you can check this link. Then we may move on to microcomputers. Now, what is microcomputer? Microcomputer is a simple desktop computer or a laptop which you use commonly in your uh, in your house or in your university and why are they called microcomputers because they when they were introduced in early 80s they were so small as compared to other computers as compared to workstations or mainframes or supercomputers then people started calling them microcomputers now this is a funny thing actually because micro is such a thing which you cannot see with your physical eyes you have to use a microscope to use to see that thing. But microcomputer itself is a big computer. 
I mean, you can easily see it. But why did they call microcomputers? Because they were so small comparing with the workstations or mainframes or supercomputers. And uh, then these microcomputers started to become very popular because you can easily carry them. You can take them anywhere. You can place them in your lap or you can use them sitting in your, in your house. But uh, if you talk about workstation and mainframe computers, they used to be very big. I mean, one mainframe computers could have been the size of a room, and one supercomputer could have been the size of a building. But microcomputer is a very small computer. Nowadays, they are becoming even smaller. So you can use them every, anywhere, and you can carry them anywhere. So some of the examples of microcomputers are desktop, tower computers, notebooks, or personal digital assistants, PDAs. And then come microcontroller. Microcontroller is basically not a computer itself, but it has got all the capabilities of a computer. It doesn't have uh, it doesn't have a monitor or it does have monitor, but those are not used as they are used for microcomputers. Microcontrollers are actually embedded chips which can be found in many electronic devices. For example, for example, you must have seen them in microwave, in programmable ovens, in blood pressure monitors, in airbag sensors, in vibration sensors, even in your MP3 players, your music players, in digital cameras, e appliances, or keyboard, or car engine controllers, and even in your mobile phones as well. And nowadays, these embedded microcontrollers are being chipped in credit cards, in national identity cards. I mean, there are so many usage of them. So what are microcontrollers are that they are in the form of small chips. And they have got a processor in them. And they take an input, and then they process that input, and they, and they provide you useful information. So now here, Again, there is a question. How many of you would say you have not used a computer today? No, I doubt anyone could say that because I know that you must have not used supercomputer, mainframe, workstation, or microcomputer, or, or workstations. But you must have used a microcomputer. Even if you have not used a microcomputer, you must have used some kind of microcontroller because microcontrollers are even available in your mobile phones or in the microwave oven which you have at your home. So you cannot say that you never had any kind of interaction with any type of computer in your life. Now, what are servers? You must have heard about servers a lot. Servers are basically powerful computers which contain multi, um, multiple kind of data. And servers are actually used to connect multiple clients. Now, there are, there are some situations where you need a lot of computers connected together. And then you need to have a central computer which should have uh, the control of all those client computers and which should contain data of all those client computers and which could perform some kind of processing for client computers. So those computers are called server. Now server could be either workstation, mainframe computers, even simple computers, but they can also be uh, a simple microcomputer. So my, uh, servers, they hold databases and programs for you. They connect to and supply services for clients and they also uh, are um, connecting devices with other computers and with other workstations. Okay, now we talk about convergence, portability, and personalization. What is convergence? Convergence is nowadays computers are being connected with other technologies. Now, you must have seen your, uh, your mobiles that they contain all kind of 
computer capabilities. For example, if you have got an iPhone or if you have got Galaxy S4, it does not only allow you to make a phone call or to, uh, or to listen to a phone call or to make a message or to receive a message, but it also allows you to connect to internet and it also allows you to check your status on Facebook or to make a tweet on a, on a Twitter or uh, to check uh, cricket scores. So basically it's not only a mobile, it contains all the capabilities of a computer and other information technology devices. So convergence means that all these technologies are converging together and they are coming in one device and mobile is a prime example of such a such a device which has convergence of lot of other technologies the other thing is portability portability means that uh, how easy a device is to carry from one place to another now portability is also becoming very important now laptop is an example of portable device you can carry laptop anywhere and uh, mobile is another example of a portable device. Now, so IT, in IT profession, portable devices are becoming more popular and there is a lot of research going on to make devices more portable. And collaboration, now there are many software which are becoming popular nowadays in IT sector. Those software allows you to connect with other people. For example, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, these are some social websites which allow you to collaborate with other people and to connect to other people. You can share your material with other people, you can talk to other people, and you can also, uh, you can also convey your viewpoints, you can also convey your uh, messages, and you can also influence other people using this these kind of mediums. So collaboration is also becoming a popular phenomena in information technology. Okay, what is the future of information technology? There are three directions of computer development. First of all is miniaturization, which means that uh, these devices will become even more smaller with the passage of time. So you must have seen that computers are becoming smaller, mobiles are becoming smaller. So this miniaturization is very important and uh, maybe in the future you see such devices where you have mobiles in your wrist watches or where you have computers which you can, uh, which you can fold and keep them in your pocket. So miniaturization is uh, is a very famous direction where new research is being carried out and computers and other IT related devices are, uh, are being miniaturized. And then comes speed. Speed is also very important and uh, there is a lot of research going on to increase speed of all these IT related devices. And affordability of course affordability is important because everyone everybody wants to buy these kind of technologies so these technologies should be so cheap that they are affordable by common people so for making them cheap new technologies are being introduced cheaper material is being used in the preparation of these devices and uh, if you talk about communication development there are again three directions Connectivity is becoming very important and connectivity you must have seen here that your mobiles can easily be connected with internet and they can be connected with other devices using Bluetooth. So connectivity is a future direction where more research will be done in the future and connectivity will be improved with the passage of time. And so is the interactivity. Now interactivity example of interactivity is again Facebook and social web where you interact with other people. YouTube is another example where one, one person posts their um, YouTube video and you interact with them through your comments or through posting another video in response of that video. So interactive 
VT is also an increasing uh, research trend and uh, multimedia then comes multimedia now multimedia contains all kind of um, I, IT technologies such as internet or mobile devices or computers so a lot of research is being carried out in improving multimedia okay now we will summarize what we have learned today in this lecture we started with the introduction of IT I told you about what IT is and what are different usages of IT in different walks of life and uh, then I talked about medium and technologies which are being used in IT and uh, which are popular in the world and um, and then we talked about some types of computers where you have got five types of computer I told you about uh, the usage of every type and uh, then I told you about the future of IT that in which direction IT technologies are going in which direction computer technology is going and uh, which direction uh, compute, uh, communication technology is going so this is the end of our lecture number one and uh, in the next lecture we will talk about professionalism until then Allah Hafiz.